After many comments, requests and the auto arranging feature, we've only gone and done it. I'm very grateful to you guys for the suggestion because it's made the Octo Tester so much more useful. Briefly, the way this works is we take the waveform coming back in from the component and we scale it to the dimensions of the Octo Tester display. And this is in exchange for some of the clarity in the trace. As you can see in this, and our short in the auto mode looks like this. So we lose some of the crispiness in the trace, but we actually gain a bigger range of capacitors and resistors that we can test compared to the normal mode, which is a big, big win. Now let's take a look at the best feature about this auto arranging mode, which is testing capacitors. So let's test two of these capacitors on this nice and neat circuit board. So the first one I'm going to test is a 100 microfarad capacitor and in the auto mode we get a nice oval trace. Then testing the second capacitor, this is a 330 microfarad capacitor, we get a slightly narrower oval trace but still looks good. With the trace looking like that we can see if there's any potential ESR. I'll get on to what that is after. So let's just compare these two in the normal mode. Testing that same 100 microfarad capacitor, we've just got a short trace because it's outside the limits of the normal mode. And for the 330 microfarad cap, same again, short. Then if we were to test the inductor, as you'll know the inductor is very similar to the capacitor, but it lags voltage. But we should still get a oval trace from the octal tester when we test it, and so we do. And for a faulty inductor, we'll see a short. In the normal mode for the inductor, we actually get a short because we can't pick up that inductance in normal mode. An interesting trace here is there's a filter on the incoming supply for this board and it gives us a funky looking trace. In normal mode, we get a slightly less defined trace for that same filter. Then I've got some SMD capacitors. They're actually on the incoming supply side and this board's actually faulty it was smoking after I powered it up. Uh, so just have a look at each uh, capacitor to give us a nice trace for the first and second one. But then when we get to the third one, we get a tilted oval trace. I said before ESR, and that stands for equivalent series resistance, which is also internal resistance. So when we see this on a capacitor, we know that it's faulty. This will happen for smaller capacitors that are used at high frequency and high temperatures. Just to show you, diodes will test just the same. So here I just test a little IC in the auto mode. Whereas in normal mode for our capacitors, the internal resistance for that top capacitor isn't as clear, so you could easily skip it. And for the IC, we get the same trace. The only difference being the auto mode zooms in on that trace. Right, I've got some clunky stuff here. And this is actually a failed Dell power supply, but it's got a few components that we can have a look at. So on the incoming 230, we've got a board with a filter on it. When we test that filter, we get a nice and round capacitance trace. Lovely stuff. Then I wanted to show you this 150 microfarad capacitor. And when we test that in the auto mode, we get a nice healthy oval. Whereas if we test that in normal mode, we just get a short, which doesn't tell us much. And just to show you guys with my multimeter in capacitance mode, if I test this 150 microfarad cap, my multimeter doesn't actually give me a clear value. This just shows that the multimeter isn't perfect for testing electronic components. After seeing that, I bet you're asking, how do I get auto range in mode? Now, it's pretty simple. When you boot up your tester, grab both your probes and just hold them together. And then you know you're in auto arranging mode because the trace has gone all fuzzy. And this only works with version 2 octo testers. So the ones we supply on the website are only version 2. There is some version 1s out there, but we don't sell them anymore. But this means if you've got a version 2, you'll have this feature as well. So go ahead and give it a try. Also, if you guys are interested in one of these octo tester stands, I've included them on the website. I'm quite glad to just give you the SDL file if you guys want it. Well anyway, I hope you enjoyed this short video. This is just a highlight of how useful the Octo tester can be. Hopefully, 
you can use this new auto ranging feature to help you find component level faults more easily. And with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.